ever struggle with prayerlessness? I struggle with prayerlessness sometimes. It's really easy to to just avoid it or not do it. Or when we try and do it, it's hard to do it. We all want to pray. We all want to pray more. We all read about people that pray for like 16 hours a day or something ridiculous like that. Well, last night I was watching a Q&A panel from Ligonier Ministries. I don't know about you, but I love watching Q&A panels. And the question of prayerlessness came up. And the answer was so excellent and so helpful that I just wanted to share it with you. Uh, I would you know, want to know, is it a sense of prayerlessness or is it prayerlessness? So I'm going to take the question to mean it's that the person has an accurate sense and that they're struggling to pray. And that certainly is part of the, the counsel that, that we may need. And I, I would also want people to understand very practically, sometimes we, we have a truncated view of what prayer likes, is like, and, and that may perhaps be owing to our own evangelical tradition, and perhaps even because of uh, the heritage of the awakenings, all that's helpful with it. But we can get in our minds that to pray means I'm by myself, and I'm getting up in the morning, and now I, I got to spend a half hour talking to God. Well, most of us, how many of us can get up and do any, communicate anything meaningfully when we first wake up for a half hour? I mean, you can't do anything. So we think that we should just be able to, okay, get up, you're out of bed, you're not tired, and go pray. Well, I, I can't, I can't do that. Uh, it takes not only work to pray, but it takes work to prepare to pray. So there's all sorts of ways you can do and lists and, and helpful devices. But part of realizing is we have equated our prayer time sometimes with spontaneous, extemporaneous, private devotions. Uh, get, get some brothers and sisters around to pray. And even if you can't think of what to say, you can, as Paul said, you know, amen to their prayers. You have a hymnal. Though, every one of those can, some of them are prayers, they all can be used as prayers. You can read the Psalms. One of the, the greatest prayer warriors I know who is one of these guys who, who does get up and pray four hours a day, he said, mainly what I do is I'm memorizing the Psalms, and I'm, I'm praying them to the Lord, and I'm going through the Psalms. Use the Valley of Vision. Use prayer books. Use even the Book of Common Prayer. Sneak it in to your Presbyterian church. Just use it privately. Uh, you know, get an, a really old version of it before it got goofy. There's lots of things that we can do. When Jesus went out and, you know, was praying, we think He was, we tend to think He was just praying like we were, but He was probably going through a, a set of psalms, uh, psalter hymns that He knew by heart, different prayers that Jews were instructed in. And so there's many ways to kind of jumpstart your prayer. And let me just give you one very practical that's been helpful for me, walk. It's harder to fall asleep when you're walking. <clears throat> you go out and you walk 10 minutes and you got 10 minutes to come back. Long, wandering prayer. Read through Psalm 55, for example, sometime. David is, uh, I should look if it's David, the, the, the psalmist, just to be, cover my bases, is, is praying. And, uh, you know, sometimes he's talking to God's second person. Sometimes he's talking about himself. Sometimes he's, he's just talking about God in the third person. It, it's a freewheeling conversation in the presence of God. And most important about prayer, perhaps, is, is where it ends up. And sometimes on the way to end up in a good place, those psalms take some circuitous routes. And we may, too, in our long wandering prayers. So get up, walk around, have a hymnal, try something different. Mm -hmm.